Good afternoon, uh, committee members, members of the public, and those of you watching on YouTube. Uh, before we go any further, I've got some housekeeping to read out, and I'll ask uh, my vice chairman to read that out. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, the building fire alarm signal is a, is a continuous two-tone alarm. On hearing the evacuation alarm, leave the building by the nearest marked exit route, follow the green signs to the assemble point, that's the last staff car park opposite the entrance to the building. Anyone who cannot use the stairs will be helped by officers present after the other people have left. Do not return to the building until it is safe to do so by an authorised officer. The older of the council site is a no smoking area. Mobile phones must be switched to silence. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vice Chair. By uh, way of introductions, my name's Councillor Dick Swetton, Chairman of this committee. Uh, to my right is Mr Stephen King, Planning Team uh, Leader. To his uh, right is uh, Natalie James, who's our drainage engineer. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. And to her right is our planning officer today, Susan Dublin. To my left, as you've just heard, is uh, my vice chairman, Councillor Bruce Forbes. To his left is uh, Zach, who is our legal officer. In the corner is Alex, who's taken the minutes, and I forgot over in that corner is Holly, who's doing technical bits. Thank you very much. Uh, go to item one uh, to receive apologies for absence. I have apologies from Councillor Peacock and Councillor Trumbull. Item two is to receive the declarations of interest from members in respect of any matter on the, on the agenda. Um, do I have any? Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Thank you Chairman. Um, yes, um, I declare a non prejudicial interest at all. I am the Council's representative for the National Park and they have objected at this, um, but I had nothing to say on their, their objection, should we say. I didn't even know they'd done it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I see no others. Um, so item three is to confirm the minutes of the previous meeting of the District Planning Committee held on the 15th of September 2022. Um, if everyone's in agreement with that, can you vote using the touch screen now, please? Legal officer will read that out, I think. Yes, um, that's nine in favour, uh, none against, and one abstention. So that's Thank you very much. Item four is to consider any items that the chairman agrees to take as urgent business. I have none. Um, item five. Uh, we go to the application today, which is DM21-1653, Byander, Brighton Road, Hassox. And I will pass that over to our case officer, uh, Susan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. But the application seeks planning permission for the demolition of Byander, a detached bungalow, and a further detached dwelling on the site and the erection of a 60-bedroom residential care facility with associated groundworks, car parking, surfacing, private amenity space and landscaping. And before I start the presentation, I just draw members' attention to the update sheet, and this does recommend additional conditions and also correct some typos. I also have an additional condition to add, and that relates to flood risk, and that is set out in full on page 83 of the report. Right, turning to uh, the site, it consists of a 1950s ancillary bungalow and a detached double garage with a 
detached house with turret and a dome swimming pool cover. Access is gained via the Brighton Road, which is located here. To the west, this, the access is shared by Fairley Glen and two large detached properties known as High Down House and Stackley House. Running alongside the driveway to the north is a stream with a culvert underneath the Brighton Road. To the west are North Dean House and South Dean House and Pound Gate, all of which front the Brighton Road and sit at a higher level than the site, while further to the east is the Weald Tennis Club. To the south is the access road for Sandfield Cottages, again set on a higher ground, and beyond that you have the South Downs Garden Centre and Heritage Centre. The site is set within the countryside as defined in the district plan, with a built-up area boundary located just to the north of the site and the South Downs National Park boundary to the south. And I will show a slide later which actually has those boundaries on. Uh, this is just a block plan which shows more clearly the development already on the site, the detached bungalow, um, detached garage, and the turreted um, party sunken house with a swimming pool domed cover, and the residential properties to the west and to the east, and the garden centre to the south. <coughs> This just gives an aerial photograph um, of the site. Again, you can see the dome to the swimming pool, the detached bungalow, uh, the residential properties to the east, um, to, the, to the west, east, and to the north, the garden centre to the south, and the tennis club. And this is the slide that I mentioned earlier, and this shows up um, the built-up boundary. So you can see the built-up boundary is fairly close to the site, just north of the um, waterway. And then this green dotted line is the line of the South Downs National Park, which just runs um, beyond the garden centre, just off the slide, and then continues in that direction. Right, this next slide is the actual um, site layout of the proposal, which has been amended, you'll see in the report, from the original submission, which was for a 66-bed care home, and this has now been reduced to um, 60 beds with height and the building footprint um, consequently reduced as well. So the proposal is for a large de detached three-storey building plus basement and to be used as a care home and I'll come on to the elevations um, in a moment. The applicant has stated that the care home will provide high um, care for high dependency, predominantly older residents with substantial care needs. The majority of residents will have a significant or very significant mobility issue. The facility will also care for residents with dementia, many of whom will need close supervision and will have attendant mobility issues. So you, on this slide you can see the footprint of the building with the principal external areas comprising of an east-facing courtyard with lawn, a southern terrace with a wooded walkway, kitchen garden and then parking predominantly along the western boundary. There would also be cycle parking provision and EV charging points are also proposed. This next slide shows the front elevation. This would be the view from Brighton Road and you can see North Dean House and South Dean House. And there would be views, although that it would be set further back obviously, of the upper floor of the care home. And this shows the full elevation. You'll see that the design is contemporary and employs a brick facade with combined timber cladding, together with gables and windows, which are representing the design and detailing of late 19th century, early 20th century houses in the local area. The front elevation would have a central section with a pitched roof, and then flat roof links either side to the two double-fronted gabled sections. This shows the north side elevation, and this is the rear elevation, which again would have the central pitched roof section with the double gables to either side. This is the um, south elevation, and you can see there just one of the um, balconies that are proposed. Turning to the um, floor plans, this shows the basement area, and this would have the staff room, laundry, and plant rooms. And this is the ground floor where you would have the entrance located in the northwest corner close to the entrance. 
and then you'd obviously have the residence rooms and along with that as on the first and second floors there would be a lounge a quiet lounge and a dining area this shows the first floor plan again with um, residence rooms the quiet room, dining room, lounge, and in addition on this floor there would be a family room and cafe and you have the um, balconies to the lounges and to the dining room. Then finally the second floor again would again have some residence rooms, you'd have a cafe, lounge, dining room, the quiet room again with balconies, but in addition on this floor there would be an activity room and also a cinema room. This is um, a cross section um, over the site. This is the South Downs Heritage Centre and you can see the basement area located here. And then this goes through the site. So this would be the Brighton Road located here. You've got North Dean House and this does show the significant drop in levels, approximately a storey lower um, of the application site. And then that's a garage located um, to the rear. So I've just included this slide because you'll see um, in the report there have been prior approvals on the site for residential development. This first one um, outlined in blue is the 2015 planning application and then the footprint of the care home is outlined in green. And then the pink shading shows the 2016 application um, with a detached garage there and again you have the outline of the care home footprint. And you'll note from the report that the 2016 approval um, has been partially implemented, so material start has been made on site, so that permission is extant. There's just um, a few photographs of the site. This is taken from the rear, so this is the rear boundary, the properties behind in, in Fairley Glen. This shows the access road looking up from the entrance to the site towards the Brighton Road. And that this shows the existing partially sunken house on the site with swimming pool dome cover. And then this is from within the garden and you can see North Dean and South Dean house and you get an appreciation of the drop in levels. And then that's the detached bungalow that would also be demolished. And this shows again the view towards the driveway and this is where the footings have been set out for one of the houses so that the permission remains extant. And then the final photograph is from the Brighton Road and shows North Dean and South Dean House and there's the gap in between where there would be some visibility of the home. But the, finally this is just um, an illustrative view of the care home. This will be entrance into the site, the entrance to the building and you can see the recessed balconies here. So um, in terms of the principle of a care home development on the site, while it lies within the countryside, it is clear that a fundamental principle of policy DP12 is that the countryside is protected for its intrinsic beauty. Development can be permitted where it maintains or enhances the quality of the rural landscape character of the district and is supported by a policy elsewhere in the district plan a development plan document or a neighbourhood plan. In this case, the development is not isolated or in open countryside. There is existing development on the site and adjoining the site. And it's considered that the building would be well designed and landscaped. And therefore it's felt there would be no harm to the countryside from the development. In addition, policies DP25 and DP30 of the district plan also provide clear support for specialist accommodation, which is further supported by policy SA39 of the adopted site allocations DPD. And for, furthermore, paragraph 62 of the MPPF and the planning practice guidance also stress the need to provide housing for older people and state that it's critical in view of the rising number of older people in the population. There is a significant unmet need for registered care homes within Mid-Sussex and therefore substantial weight is given to the fact that the proposal will add to the local supply of care homes. It's also a material planning consideration that there's an extant planning permission for four dwellings on the site. The proposal is therefore considered <coughs> to comply with DP12 and is acceptable in principle. You'll see from the report weighing against the proposal is that there would be a loss of habitat as a result of the de development and this is set out on pages 39 to 41 of the report 
and without sufficient mitigation or compensation, there is a conflict with policy DP38. However, this has to be weighed against the benefits of the proposal, the extant permission on the site, which is the material consideration. And it's also relevant that the loss of the habitat has been established by this extant permission. And weighing in favour of the scheme is that the development will provide new care home facility for which there is an identified need and would provide employment opportunities. I would also like to just draw members' attention to the section of the report regarding the Equalities Act 2010 on pages 46 to 49. You see a representation was received regarding the steep gradient of the access road from the Brighton Road and the Council's public sector quality duty is therefore engaged. The report sets out the remediation measures proposed by the applicant and these include the access management policy and a proposal for an intercom system on Brighton Road. So to conclude, as set out in the officer recommendation, the recommendation is for approval subject to the completion of a section 106 agreement and in this case the section 106 contributions would be for libraries with a contribution of £11,070 to be used towards additional facilities at Hassocks Library and the TAD contribution of £52,884 and this would be used towards pedestrian and cycle improvements in Hassocks. And that ends my presentation. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks very much, Susan. Uh, we have uh, six speakers today. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Councillor Burkreen. Um, if you'd like to take your, your seat there. Uh, we do have a, a timing system here. Uh, that is actually set up for two minutes. So the first minute will be timed by the legal officer. When the green light comes on, you will have two minutes to speak. When the amber light comes on, you will have 30 seconds. When the red light comes on, I will ask you to round up to your nearest sentence. Thank you very much and proceed when, when you're ready. Despite the latest amended plans and the small reduction in bedrooms, the scale and design are still far too large for this small site and represent a significant overdevelopment and will have a negative impact on the amenities of neighbouring properties. This site is outside the build-up boundary of Essex, as defined in the neighbourhood plan, where development should be restricted. District Plan Policy 12, Protection and Enhancement of the Countryside. The access is onto the busy A273, close to Stone Town Costloads, with a high level of air pollution and additional traffic generated by the proposed care home will impact on the level of air pollution and traffic safety. This is contrary to Policy 8, Air Quality Management of the Hassock Neighbourhood Plan and DP29, Noise, Air and Light Pollution of the District Plan. It is requested that the issues raised by the local residents regarding traffic and access to this site is carefully considered. The gradient of the driveway is too steep to safely allow wheelchair access and it is likely this is in conflict with the 2010 Equality Act. The proposed parking provision of only 20 parking spaces for all visitors and staff appear to be wholly inadequate. Concerns over flooding and drainage have been raised by residents who live in the immediate vicinity of the development site and are familiar with issues around flooding in the area. It is requested that all concerns raised are reviewed in detail. The location of the site is very close to the South Downs National Park and will be clearly visible from the South Downs. It is considered that the development would have an adverse impact on the South Down National Park, contrary to policy six of the Hassock Neighbourhood Plan. And development, development proposals affecting the South Down National Park and policy DP18 of the District Plan, setting off the South Down National Park. It has often been said by local residents that their views are not always reflected in planning matters. Uh, I hope you'll pull them wrong today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Sorry, can you state your... your... Sorry, that, that confused me a bit there. <laughs> yeah, uh, on, our next speaker is Mr. John, John Chow. Um, and you're, can you tell me who you're representing, please? Okay, thank you. You're quite happy the way the system works for timing. Okay, thank you very much. Proceed when ready. Thank you. Mr Chairman, councillors, thank you for inviting me to speak. I reside at Highdown House, one of three residential properties located to the eastern boundary of Byander. We moved into our house in 2018, selecting it due to its rural, tranquil setting near the South Downs National Park. I speak in objection to the planning application to develop a care home on the site of Byander. I would start by stating that I'm in principle supportive of development on the site of an appropriate nature and scale. However, the applicant's proposal for a 60-bed care home over four storeys, three of which are above ground level, represents gross over overdevelopment of the 0.99 acre site. The three-storey monolithic structure covers around 50% of the land area of the development site, with the balance being car park, access drive and limited amenity space. This makes the proposed structure wholly out of keeping with all adjacent properties and those in the surrounding area on the semi-rural boundary of the National Park. Indeed, South Downs National Park is an objection due to, I quote, the building's height, scale, massing and appearance. I would contend that the design review panel's assessment is incomplete, as a key aspect of the mitigation of the building's impact is its location one storey lower than North Dean House and South Dean House. Yet this assessment fails to consider that High Down House and Stackley House are in fact at a lower altitude than the development site. None of the elevations or renderings fully represent the impact of the visual outlook from our property. Despite re repeated requests, I've not been able to get a representative from the DRP, perhaps because of COVID, to visit the site, so question their conclusions being fully validated. The access driveway is remarkably steep at over an 8% gradient right up to the main Brighton Road, at which there is a crest. I note that WSCC Highways have visited the site and concluded that the driveway does not meet the MFS2 policy requirement and therefore find it extraordinary that they overlook this fact and have no objection on the grounds that the applicant does not own the driveway and is therefore unable to modify it to be compliant. This in no way addresses the safety aspect of the steep driveway. At times, even with the current intensity of usage, we also need to reverse up and down the driveway to accommodate oncoming traffic. The dustbin lorry always has to reverse down the driveway for bin collection and can cause a backlog of traffic into the Brighton Road. It has not been proven to building regulation standards that the land actually drains, which is a requirement for the applicant's drainage strategy. Only amateur tests have been conducted with a spade and a bucket of water. How on earth has this been recommended as an approval on this basis? I question why the correct BRE 365 testing methodology has not been conducted, with the, which the applicant's own drainage strategy paper states needs to be. This is a key deliverability issue which cannot be deferred as a condition of planning. If the committee members were the only ones to see sense on this application, the objection and refusal of the applicant to amend their scheme to align with the South Downs National Park concern would be more than a substantive reason for objection, and one readily defended at an appeal alongside other points raised by fellow objectors. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you're staying seated to read out um, uh, for Sadie Roberts, I believe. Yeah, Thank you. I read this statement on behalf of Mr and Mrs Roberts that reside at Sandfield Cottage, Brighton Road, Hassocks. Thank you for agreeing to hear our written objection. We are writing as objectors to the above proposed planning application for the following reasons. The scale of the proposed building is wholly inappropriate for the site. Indeed, the SDNP are in objection to the application due to the size of the proposed building. Drainage is a concern as well. The site does not drain well. During particularly wet winters, we have allowed the current owners to pump out water across our land into Ham Stream on our southern boundary. The correct BRE 365 testing has not been completed. This is a serious issue, should not be passed over as, and added as a condition. The access driveway is very steep and does not meet the MSS2 policy requirement. The driveway is not owned by the applicant and legally they cannot make any modifications or amendments to it. Has it been provided that the proposal can be provided with water under the Council's DP42 policy. We are hopeful that members can acknowledge that the above are indeed serious problems and reject the application. We trust that any relationships the applicant may have with the committee members are disclosed and that these will not bias the members' decisions. Please note we are not against appropriate development on the site. Right. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is uh, Tina Ang Angsley. Thank you. <coughs> now I have to ask you're quite happy how this works. Yeah. Time system. Okay. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so proceed when you're ready. Thank okay. You. May I introduce myself? My name is Tina Ainsley, and my parents live at Fairy Glen, a neighbouring property to Byander, and have done so for 50 years. I was brought up at Fairy Glen, and I know the surrounding area intimately. My parents own the only access road to Byander, the development site. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I'm speaking in opposition of the, to the development. I have written to the Mid-Sussex District Council Planning Office regarding this on numerous occasions with our concerns, which I feel have been largely ignored. And I say that because I have had no response to my letters. My main objection is the stormwater plan, which currently appears to be non-existent. It has not been proven to building regulation standard that the land actually drains. The only tests which have been done are by a man with a bucket of water and a spade. This is outrageous. The BRE365 water infiltration test is a basic requirement for any new build work, even for developments much smaller than this one. Everybody knows this. In the absence of infiltration, there is no way to drain the land, and therefore planning permission should not be granted. My second point is access. The driveway leading to the plot is not owned by the applicant and cannot be modified or amended in any way. It can't even be dug up to lay drainage or services to serve the development. During development, any modification, digging, building material deliveries or obstruction to the access road would be totally unacceptable to the three homeowners who use it. This could prevent emergency services reaching these dwellings if required. This is a critical point for my elderly parents who live there, as I said, for 50 years, as between them, they frequently need emergency ambulance services. As owners of the access road, if the applicant seeks from us to do anything, we will not grant it. Also, the access to the plot is narrow and steep and exists on an already totally congested Brighton Road. I'd also just like to add, which wasn't on my notes, when we looked at the original map of the area, Sue Doubly pointed out a water, what she called a waterway or a stream, and Mid-Sussex Council keep calling that a waterway or a stream. It's not a waterway, it's not a stream, it's an area of stagnant water that flows nowhere. So no water can be put into that area in case they decide to do that, because it flows into... It doesn't flow anywhere, it's stagnant. So that is not, that is not a, a possibility. Thank you. Thanks very much. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Peter Tudor. And can you just say who you're speaking for, please? I'm speaking on behalf of the applicant, uh, Frontier Estates. Okay, thank you. And you're happy with how the time is? Well, I think so, yes. Okay, proceed when ready, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to present to you. Uh, as I've said, I'm the agent for the applicant. Your officer's report is very thorough and clear in its recommendation to approve the application, but I believe it's useful just to underline a number of uh, points uh, to assist you in your deliberations. The application has been with the authority for some time, uh, since April 2021, in fact. And whilst we would have been pleased to have got to this point sooner, the time taken, in my view, is reflective of the very thorough consideration of the application by your planning officers, our approach to collaborative working, and the clear need and merits of the scheme, uh, which are understood uh, very clearly by my client and Barchester the prospective care home operator. 
There have also been numerous opportunities for neighbours and other stakeholders to comment on the application, uh, and of course they've taken up those opportunities. And those comments have been exhaustively considered both by ourselves and the planning authority to reach this positive and very robust position. A few other points to add. As you know, the site is an existing residential development site, so it's a brownfield site. Clearly it's better where possible to bring forward development on such sites in preference, uh, in preference to greenfield sites. Having said that, it's not actually a matter here of whether development takes place on this site, but rather in what form. As has been said already, the site is subject to a live implemented permission for four large two and a half storey residential uh, properties uh, with uh, around 17 car parking spaces on site. The new care home will not radically change the extent of development on site, nor substantially change local character over that that's already proposed. However, it will help need a pressing local need for additional care spaces, as well as creating jobs and long-term investment in the community. As I've already noted, there is a pressing need for new high-quality care bed spaces, both in Hassox and, and Mid-Sussex generally. Your very recently adopted policy, SA39, refers to this pressing need and provides for meeting that need on accessible sites such as this, contiguous with the existing urban area. My client has worked very closely with the prospective operators, Barchester Healthcare, to work up the scheme, and Barchester are confident that the location and scheme will provide the basis of, upon which they can deliver high-quality, life-enhancing care and that they will be able to meet and exceed all those statutory and other obligations, including in relation to the Equality Act. Working closely with the R officers, we've, we have addressed all the relevant technical issues, including access, drainage, ecology, and local amenity. Thank you. Brilliant timing. Thank you. Uh, now call Mr. Julian Burgess, please. Thank you. Can you tell me who you're speaking for, please? Yes, indeed. My name is Julian Burgess. Um, I represent Barchester Healthcare. Uh, we are a potential residential care operator on the site. Okay, thank you. And I have to ask you happy how the timing system works. I am indeed, thank you. Okay, thank you. Please carry on when ready. Thank you for allowing me to speak at the committee. It's very much appreciated. Barchester is one of the leading care home operators in the UK. We have experience of operating over 260 care homes and employ around 18,000 staff and we care for over 14,000 residents. Drawing on our experience of delivering high quality care, we've worked closely with the applicants Frontier Estates over an extended period to develop these proposals. We're confident that the location, setting and design of the scheme will combine to create an excellent facility from which to provide high quality care to residents to the standards that we demand at Barchester. As the committee will know, there is a real urgent need for a modern fit for purpose care home spaces in Essex <coughs> and the wider area for our growing older population. And this is reflected <coughs> your local plan policies which seek to bring forward edge of urban area sites such as Bianda. To outline our assessment of the pressing needs in the local area, we consider that there is a current shortfall of 371 care bed spaces with ensuite wet rooms within a three mile radius of the site. This is using industry recognised and CQC approved software and data collection. This is an equivalent to six new care homes. Nationally, 14 care homes close every month and with an ageing population, over 85s will double by 2050, and this figure is set to increase. This category of accommodation represents modern qualitative benchmarks endorsed by the CQC. Whilst there is an existing quantitative lack of care spaces in Hassex and the surrounding area, there's also a need to improve the quality of provision. The existing stock of care homes locally comprises mainly first-generation homes 
built in the 1980s and 90s when registration design standards were lower and 50% of these are now classified by the CQC as requiring improvement in their latest inspection reports. HASAC's older people should be able to expect better choice in the quality of later, click, later living care available. And a key way to increase resident choice and raise standards across the board is by granting permission for the development of modern, purpose-built care homes to be run by reputable operators. The Bayanda site offers the opportunity to deliver on that pressing need for a choice of quality care. The outlook of the new home will provide interest for the residents, which we feel vital to their well-being. The interrelationship of the proposed care home with adjacent uses and the wider community is welcomed by Barchester also. The proposed design is appropriate and commendable in terms of both layout and appearance. The immunity space for the care home has been designed with residents' needs in mind and will play a vital role in resident well-being. Oh. oh. I'm off. So well, can I ask you to round up to your nearest okay. sentence, please? Um, we will employ 70 full-time and part-time staff members, which I believe is a great boon to the local area. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you very much. <coughs> right, members, before we... Uh, uh, come to you for your, your comments. So I would just like to go through the main aspects of the application. Firstly, starting uh, with the, the scale and layout of the building. I don't know whether you could put that slide up again. Susan, show that, please. Obviously, this has gone through the design and review panel and with our urban designer, and they're quite happy that this it, application building sits well within the site so as you can have you got the the one the drawings of, of the yes sorry As you can see, so like I say, the urban designer and design review panel have looked at this and they're quite satisfied. Uh, members, do, do I have any questions on, on this part of the application? Councillor Bates. It's more of a clarification, Mr Chairman, of us considering this application from what we've heard today about the contradiction, about the access... I know that you, somebody's going to say it's a legal matter, but um, we seem to be hearing conflicting views about the actual access. And certainly, we, when we did a site visit, we were informed about a wall might have to be removed. So, so uh, Councillor Bates, can I, uh, I will be coming to later on and just going through the main Oh, things. sorry, I thought you'd finished your bit. No, no, I'm just asking members, have there any comments on, on the oh, scale okay. and matter? Sorry. Of the yeah, building right. on, on that site. Okay. Uh, Councillor Koo. Yes, I, it's, it's quite a pleasant design. It, um, you know, people who are reaching the end of their life, they don't want to live in a barrack block, and it's quite, it's quite reasonable. My one concern, and I don't know whether you want to deal with it at this moment, I can't see anything in the preambles, I may have missed it, with regard to fire and lifts. Uh, you've got a third floor there and you will need to get the people out and on an article I was reading about three months ago they've now decided that lifts should be on the outside of the building so that uh, the fire doesn't in inhibit the movement of invalided people I, think I, I have other questions on this particular subject on, on this site yes yeah. Yeah, uh, we do, we, we're doing the, the actual... You wanted the, to deal with, with, the, with the aspect of it, didn't you? Yes, we go through, then we go through the access, air quality, perfect. drainage, those sections, because I think they need to be discussed properly. Susan, I think that's uh, more building regs, is it not? Yeah, I was just going to say that, but I, I would confirm that there are lifts in the building. Um, obviously, no, normally you wouldn't be able to use the lifts anyway in, in case of a fire, would you? But no. um, it is covered by building regs, you're correct. Uh, Councillor Whitaker. 
Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just a very simple question. Did the design review panel visit the site? Because the reason I say that is because obviously when we did the site visit on Monday, this site has got a very unique um, topographical changes, particularly in levels, and you have to go there. So, um, and, the, and the officer's report, I wasn't sure whether they had visited the site. Clearly the urban designer has, but did the design review panel. Uh, pass that over to you. The answer to that is, is no, that the um, design review panel don't, don't visit sites, not just this one. They, they don't do that, but you're correct. The urban designer um, would have gone to the site, and you'll see that, obviously, there were comments made at the design review panel, um, and amendments were made consequently to that, and the, and the urban designer was satisfied that those had been addressed. Obviously, they, they are just one consultee, um, but they, they don't, as normal practice, make site visits. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Reeves. Thank you, Chair. Yes, on the massing, I do think it's too big. I think it's overbearing. There's not enough room around the outside. I noticed the tree officer said a smaller footprint would be welcome, allowing dense native boundaries to thrive around the perimeters. I don't think you could actually walk around it because it's just too big. And I worry about the parking. OK, thank you. I think, would you like to take, I think there is room outside room to walk. Yeah, and if I, if I just show the, the, um, the layout, which is also the landscape plan, that, um, there are walkways and you, you could walk from there and, it, and they are all level access for, um, for wheelchairs. So there is a, you wouldn't walk around the whole building, but there are walkways um, and you have got areas here along there that you, you could walk along. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chairman. I do have concerns about this. Uh, this application, I must admit, to be honest. Um, can I ask the officer through you, um, how much square meterage when you take in consideration the actual building and the car park um, compared to the four extant planning permissions are, oh, please? Then I'd like to follow it up, please. <coughs> I don't actually have the, the actual square meter, but you can see from, from the slide that I showed, um, just go back to that. You can see the extant um, permissions there. So, the one, yeah. yeah. So this is the one that has got an um, extant permission. So I think if if you put those together, they probably do equate to the footprint. And obviously, there there would be um, some hard surfacing as well to form parking uh, for those as well and access through to the side. Yes, please do. Yeah. The reason I like that photograph compared to the the massing of it is there are four ba uh, buildings and four buildings do not take up the, the mass that this building does take up. I, I, I note from the uh, presentation when you're traveling down the Brighton Road, all you can see is the upper end, the upper floor of the site. Uh, I have lots of other concerns about it, but the, the one concern I do have, and I have to share this with Councillor Eves, is the sheer size of it on this um, site. And in, within the report, um, references made to the, um, the place up in uh, Rowan in uh, Felbridge in Crawley Down, that uh, there is a need for this site. And, and even in my ward up in Hancross, um, there is a, um, a site allocated for a C2 um, extra care home up there. So I can, they've got plenty of land around it. But this site, I just don't think it has. But I'll be, I'm not made my mind up yet, but I do have concerns. And I have lots of other questions I'd like to ask at another time, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Coote. Um, well, I've got a number of things. I'll, I'll rattle them off fairly quickly. Number one, I don't consider there's enough car parking. And I do have experience of care homes. I worked for 17 years for Cheshire Home as a volunteer on the management committee, one of the, the largest one in, in we deal, we had 50 patients or residents, and we had a site more car parking, you've got visitors, you've got staff, and uh, I think that's, that's a mistake. Um, secondly, the access, well, that really isn't a problem as far as we're concerned. Have I not put, pressed my button? No, no, we're coming on to access later on. Oh, oh, you keep coming. I thought we were going to deal with everything. 
Well, all right, I'll come back to the access. Um, that's it. Oh, thank you. Councillor Band. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there, there's, this is a bit of chalk and cheese application for me. I like the design. I like the location. Um, it's big. It's very big in relation to the location. Um, <coughs> can I ask, actually, the distance between the... I'm trying to think. It would be the western side of the property, I think. The close, side closest to um, North Dean and South Dean houses. What's the kind of linear measurement between the two buildings there? Um, so I, I, I'm kind of cognizant. I don't know how big the concern is yet regarding the um, impact on privacy. I answer that question. If you look on page 32 of the report under um, impact on neighbouring amenity, it does have the distance and it would be some 24 metres between um, the rear of North Dean and South Dean House and the, the new building. Okay. Okay, uh, Councillor Bates. Um, picking up on about basically the size of the building. Um, when we did a site visit, I was asking about the proximity of a very large oak tree on the driveway, where it shows on by the gates here. It's not shown on the map here. Um, it's in a different position. But I was told that the tree was next to a staircase but it's also next to room 03 on the ground floor, plus the other two above it. And I think that makes the point about the size of this building and the proximity of a substantial tree nearby. And the other thing we heard uh, from the officer just now, that there is a walkway all the way around the building, which is something I'd like to see people going around in wheelchairs and having some sort of rotation. But this footpath peters out so you can't go all the way around the building mainly because of the size so can we clarify that we can go around the building or not i don't think you mentioned that that is it. Um, I just start, in, in, ter in terms of the tree, um, that, that is a, um, a tree that might be planted, so the landscaping details are subject to condition anyway, so that's sort of an indicative <coughs> landscape at the moment. Sorry, it's not even on any property. Sorry? It's not on the property that we're looking at. I think it was... A... It's, it's the one outside. It's not inside the Oh, I see. Sorry, I, I thought you were talking about the tree that was shown in the corner. I, I, I thought you were talking about the, this tree here. I would, do you know? Okay. I mean, we obviously have got the tree officer's comments and they haven't commented on, on that aspect of it. In fact, with the reduction in footprint, they were happier with the proposal than the um, previous 66 bed one. <coughs> Okay. We're coming on to that later. The, the <laughs> Councillor Jackson. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I visited the site on Monday with some members of this committee. Um, it's obviously a site that needs redevelopment. Um, it's certainly a very uneven site. There will be a certain amount of levelling up around the particular construction. It seems to be quite a large building, but quite imaginatively designed. Uh, on the other hand, looking at the site to the west, there's a very, very high bank with trees, which will effectively shield most of the development from those two properties on the Brighton Road. Although I would expect to have some kind of stabilization of that bank because there's quite a drop down from those two properties on the Brighton Road to the site. Looking to the east, there's an extremely high hedge which effectively screens any development from the properties to the west. Um, so in terms of the building, it is certainly a site which is well screened. 
If we look to the south, then of course we've got the um, South Down nurseries, and of course that's quite a sort of large, intrusive appearance, which you can see from the South Downs, which will certainly draw the, the visitors on the Downs' eyes to that, rather than what is going to be a, a building to the north of it. In terms of the actual location, looking all round, you've got houses to the right of them, you've got houses to the left of them, there are houses down from Stone Pound. So although it's outside the defined boundary of Hassocks, it's nevertheless quite a built-up area. So <coughs> that's probably not an objection we could probably accept. That it's outside the built-up area of Hassocks. Uh, so we do on access about that later. Okay. <coughs> uh, sorry, um, I'm can't allow you to uh, speak while the committee is in session. Sorry. I didn't finish telling Mr Bates' question about the walkway all the way around. Didn't, didn't <coughs> uh, on that point, so it, it, it doesn't... Does it peter out at the end of...? Yeah, I think I've answered that um, previously. Yeah, you, yes, yes, there yes. is a walkways round, but you wouldn't go round the, the whole of the yeah. building. Thank you. I think I've answered that. Way here through the the woods there, and you can, and you can access. You've got yeah, so you can access the terrace as well from that way. Okay, thank you, um, Councillor Hatton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I just want to support things that have been said so far by other councillors. I didn't realise we were going to go through it chunk by chunk, um, but certainly I feel this um, is a very difficult site to fill with a nursing home. It's down in a dell, um, it's very um, enclosed with the trees around it, and I think the, um, the people inside will not be having a very good view outside, and I don't think there is enough residential amenity outside. Um, just talking about the pathway round, we've been there on Monday, and it looks, it's very undulating, it will require a lot of work, so I'm not happy about the size of the building. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Coote, is this our last no, question on this? Yes, now, please. I'm um, coming on to the access. I thought it was appropriate on this because there's such a lot of objections. We need to discuss the, the mm, motion. Can I deal with the drainage then? And we're going on to the drainage. We're discussing those specifics on, on this occasion. So we have a good debate on, on each thing. So all right. rather than going all over the place, so that's what I plan to, I did mention that earlier. So the ne next part is the access. So members, um, do I have any questions regarding access to the site? <coughs> Councillor Coote. Well, as far as the access is concerned, um, so long as it complies with the County Council, should the, the owners of the access grant permission um, it's nothing to do with us, really. We just we can either pass it or not. Um, it's a legal matter for the neighbours to sort out. If they own that access, they don't have to give access to the site, so the site is there. landlocked. Thank you. Well, as, as we read in the report, to the as a right of the site, the sleepers are going to be removed and there'll be a footpath uh, down that side, which actually... Uh, widens it so there'll be enough uh, room for a, a dust cart and a car to park down to that short run before it goes in. But they've got access rights over it, the applicant. There are access rights over it. Yes. Councillor Bates. Well, I won't prolong it too much more, Mr Chairman, but the point I was trying to make is that we're hearing contradiction about the access, and I know you'll say it's a legal matter, the fact is that um, at the present time there seems to be access onto the site to the small bungalow and other properties, but suddenly um, this might be denied. And you know we're going ahead trying to approve a planning application, and it might never succeed because of this particular issue. I, I just wanted some clarification that somebody is coming here telling us one thing. And the council seem to have got some information that tells us 
something different? Well, I think the, the app, applicant has got access rights. So, so would you like to clarify that on that point so members are clear? Yeah. There is a right of access, and obviously um, they, a transport statement and a, an, a, an addendum were put in, which are being considered by West Sussex County Council Highways. And you'll see in their in their comments, they have said that the gradient on uh, from the Brighton Road is greater than eight percent. But they've also said that that wouldn't be a reason to refuse it. And, and if you look at the trips data. Um, in the morning peak, which is between eight to nine, uh, they said that there would be nine nine trips, and in the um, evening peak, between five and five and seven, the trip generation would be nine again. So there wouldn't be a, you know, a huge amount of traffic, and obviously, if say we haven't got an objection from the highways. Can I come back very quickly? Chair? Usually, usually access like this is specific. There is, there, there is, you may do this, you may do that, you may enter on foot, or you may have a wheelbarrow or something. Are there, are, are there details there? But as, as I said previously, it's, nothing, it's not our concern, really, is it? Well, uh, thank you, Councillor Coote. Um, Councillor Bates, you, was you happy, happy with that? Well, not really. It didn't answer the question at all, going on about something completely different. But... You know, I accept that we might pass this application and there seems to be a legal dispute. And it's, it's sad that we can't get an answer as to who owns what land. Yeah, but we do, the, the applicant does have access rights on, on that drive. So, it's right away, so, yeah. Sorry, I was just looking at this, just to clarify, uh, any external agreements between third parties are not um, I, I matters, I, yeah. Uh, all I'm saying is, Sorry, just, order, Chair, can I ask all speakers use the microphone? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're, you're, and I will take speakers one at a time without interruption, please. <coughs> so the legal officer has answered your question on that, Councillor Bates. Really, I don't understand the situation, but we can proceed. Okay, thank you. I'll go to the next speaker, Councillor Eves. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, may I say I approve very much of the way you're chairing this meeting, taking it in chunks. Uh, I'm concerned about the room for the splay and whether there would have to be a bin store at the top as well and a pavement because the green bin has to be taken from the side of the road. Uh, we've heard that the bin men do actually reverse into this place because they can't turn around at the end so there it is narrow and you wonder how a fire truck would uh, would cope as well is there enough width for two vehicles and a footpath and of course it's very steep so if you wanted to wheel your relative up and round to the cafe at the south downs center it would be really difficult so I think it's very steep. And again, I echo what uh, Councillor Bates said. It's all very well having access, but what about if you need to dig it up to lay utilities? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Well, like I say, the applicant has access rights to, to that plot. Um, with the uh, 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 splays being widened and, and the the access route is, is widened. There is enough room for a bin lorry to get down there with the car passing. And I believe the bin store is located just to the right in sight. Yeah, let's, let's just confirm that. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Councillor Jackson. Right, thank you, Chairman. If we look at access, there are two issues here. One is obviously the access into the Brighton Road but there are a number of other roads that go there. There's Poundgate and there's also south, something or other, further up towards the traffic lights. There's Sandy Lane on the opposite side. So that's obviously something which the County Council has assessed and deemed it satisfactory, although there is probably quite a busy time in the morning and evening rush hours. But it, it, you, access to and from this care home is likely to be during the day as well, and probably people would probably avoid going there at, at those very, very busy times. So that point. The second thing is access for residents coming up and down the path. Now, if they've got severe mobility problems, then they're not likely to be walking up. I mean, I have mild mobility problems, and I was able to walk up that slope, although it is quite steep. 
Uh, most of the people moving off-site are either be taken off-site by visitors in their cars or alternatively in a, a properly adapted minibus to able to take them to various venues for their entertainment. So, and also, of course, access is important around the site if they're wheel on wheelchairs to be able to get to the patio area or to the east side of the premises, which may well be a pleasant place for them to sit in warm, sunny summer afternoons. So these are very, very important things which have been looked at uh, in part of this planning. So as long as there's decent um, wheelchair access all around the particular building so they can do get out and about rather than having to sit in their rooms all day, that will be a, bo a bonus. Thank you. Uh, well, the, uh, Susan, this does answer the question about access around the site. With respect to your question uh, about uh, people entering the site, there will be an intercom, a managed intercom system at the entrance to the site. So that will uh, help people and manage the access into their care home. Councillor Hatton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm going to quote something here. The comments by West Sussex County Council Highways on page 73 says, the grading of pedestrian routes should ideally be no more than 5%, and that 8% should be a maximum, which is the limit for most wheelchair users, advised in inclusive mobility paragraphs 525. The grading appears to be steeper, and thus the applicant should consider whether it's appropriate to improve the grading of the access road. And then we're told on page 70 that this cannot be done. And I presume that must be because they do not have ownership of the lane. And taking it a stage further, in relation to the fact that previous thing that we talked about, where it's um, a very big site and they're, and they're going to feel enclosed because of the trees, it's very steep. But people need to be wheeled out into the fresh air, not necessarily taken by car somewhere else. Um, there's another nursing home in Hassocks where we frequently see um, residents being wheeled around and they like to be part of the community. And you've got the garden centre just down the road with a restaurant and flowers and, and the heritage centre. And it'd be very nice if people could be wheeled out there and get some fresh air. So I'm not happy about the access being OK, whether there's an intercom there or not, because the, it's very arduous for even the fittest relative or friend to push a wheelchair up that slope. Okay, thank you. Your comments noted. Uh, Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think the access is it, 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 it's good enough for the um, West Sussex County Council highways to say there is enough access there, but I do have some concerns that we have heard. I would like some clarification whether it's just an objector saying this or it is actually true. Uh, the all green waste team advised the green waste collection to be made at the junction. Is that actually fact or is that just an objector saying that? Do you know? So that, that to me is not a problem. But the question I would ask, and I've got a follow-up question, Chairman, is one of the objectors has said that the garden waste team advised that all green waste collections must be made at the junction, and they were talking about a, accommodate a bin store. Is that correct, or is that just...? Obviously, I don't know whether that is, is correct or not. That's just one of the objections. I but thought, I think, yeah. we, obviously, we have to look at it as the existing situation okay. now, so... Yeah. Okay, can I follow up, Chairman, then? If yes. there is a, meant to be a bin store there, and wherever it goes is immaterial as far as I'm concerned, this is an industrial collection. This is not Mid-Sussex District Council bin lorries going down there. Maybe the, the green waste and um, the owners of the three properties to the east. But this will be an industrial waste. This will be Biffa, because they're the ones who do all the bin collections. And there is no way on this earth you'll be able to get a stat bin up that site. From, I'm not been to the site, but I'm hearing what everybody else is saying. There is no way you're going to get a stat bin full of rubbish up that slope into a bin storage. It will take at least six, seven people to push that thing up that hill. I have got, um, in my own ward, we, they, all the way, uh, the team, sorry, 
all the care homes that we have are actually serviced by not Mid Sussex, but by a private company, and it's normally Biffa or somebody else other than Mid Sussex District Council. So I'm just wondering how they're going to get one of those whacking great lorries in there, and and it says it can turn. And you've done the tracking, so it says it's done the tracking. That's fine. Two cars may be able to get in there, but where is the collection point on that site? for all the rope, the bins. I can't see it. You showed us where the EV points are. You showed us where the um, uh, bicycle storage is, but where will they be storing the bins? Because there's another question I'd like to ask further on when we get to that stage. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, would you like to, I think the bins are in, in the site on the right on it. The bins, the bins stores are here. It's not actually labelled up, but they will be here on, on the site. There. So you're going to, sorry Chairman, so you're going to drive into the site, somehow turn a, a 35 foot long lorry, or how long they actually are, pick up the, the stat bins, because they are stat bins, they're not like the ones we've got at our own house, these are the big industrial size, <coughs> reverse out or drive out and go end onto the thing. I don't know how you can do that Chairman, but if you say the tracking is done, I have no concern about it saying it's not, but I just can't see it. Thank you, Chairman. I don't think there's any ob objections for access, and I think what you're talking about, the Biffa bins, I don't think the lorries are any bigger than our district council bins, but... We they... do, Chairman, we do. We've got three smaller lorries that Mid-Sussex, because I was the portfolio holder, which authorised the purchase of those three, and they, they're the ones who go down to do all these smaller, tight little roads they can go down. The ones we normally see on the side of the road are the really big ones, but we do have three small ones. Biffa don't have those. I know for a fact they don't. Uh, as I understand it, and the, uh, Susan, would you like to clarify that? Because I think we're yeah. talking about a normal size uh, lorry. Um, a tracking drawing. So obviously, tracking drawings were put in, which have been looked at um, by the county, um, and they have sh they have shown a large a refuse vehicle um, along with an estate car. So. Um, this is a refuse vehicle entering um, with an estate car exiting. No, no, sorry, Jeremy, you misunderstand what I'm saying. And don't say that's not the case. You have got to get, whether there's a car there or not, you have got to get a lorry off the Brighton Road into the site by the bin collection. You then got to get that lorry out of that site so it enters onto the Brighton Road facing forwards. I can't see within the site itself, not, not that track in there, I can't see within the site where a size lorry can turn around. Uh, oh, Sorry, oh, Chairman. So, uh, the... I mean, it, does, it does say in the, in the high rates report that the um, turning would actually be not within, within the site, it would be off the site, which would be here, but they've Brilliant. actually got... But they have got access rights to do, to do that. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that one little bit. What I'm saying, Chairman, is bin storage or not. So they'll collect the bins, put it in there. Depends on how quickly they use it. It could be once, twice, three or four times a week. I don't know. Depends on how much waste they generate. They have got to bring the lorry in, take the bin out of the storage, you're saying they've now got to move the bin up to that where the blue tracking is. If that's the way it's got to be done, that's the way it's got to be done because it, it hasn't answered what I said. You can't get that lorry actually into the car park by the bin store. It just won't happen. Physically can't be done. I, I think, sorry if I'm... Sorry, Jim, I, yeah, yeah I, 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 I think we'll um, just um, clarify this. Uh, as I understand it, the bin lorry, normal roadside, size bin lorry can access the site and and it's got uh, access rights to be able to turn around back into the site pick the bin up and go out and that's as I understand it I'm not denying that Jim. so there is a turning point I can see the, the tracking there the same as everybody else in this room who's watching it I can see where the, the tracking is the small blue tracking bit I would assume is a car the big wider one is the lorry Okay, so you're going to come in, he's going to go past the site, so you're going to pick up from Furley and the other two places, all the four, six bedroom houses, but he won't be able to get onto this site 
to pick up the bins, and it's not, and I think Chairman, we're at odds here, it's not the little bins that we have at our houses. I know the bins you're talking about. Mm. I, I, if, if I'm proved wrong, fine. I'm just trying to trying to help, Chairman. I just cannot see how that can be done, that's all. Okay, we're just going to try and clarify your question. Yeah, it's what I said previously, the Sorry. clarification would be that they, that they would use the access yeah, into the site to, to, um, to turn, the, and the highways have said that in their comments. So yeah. It says, it says it on page 31, a refuge collection vehicle can manoeuvre the access and pass a car, and the applicant has confirmed that whilst turning within the site will occur outside of the red, red edge. This will take on plan, place on land that the applicant has access rights over. Yes, so looking at I think what, what we're saying, that there is plenty of room, there's a car parking on the left and you've probably got a width of about over five metres for the bin lorry to go past the site, reversing. Well, actually, Chair, that's, that's the three the, 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 the northern boundary sorry that is the northern boundary isn't it they were those little trees are and the in the far distance would be where Furley is and you swing around to the other two trees other two houses yes okay so a bin lorry going in there I'm, I'm sorry I'm laboring the point this is the whole basis of my argument is that is too big for that site so you can't get I don't think you'll be able to get a bin lorry in there Swing it into the site without taking the stuff out on the left-hand side, the northern boundary, or if you do turn into it, I don't know how the hell it's going to get out with all the car parking spaces in there. That's why I'm arguing, Chairman, about this, because I think this site, this building is too big for this site. Well, that, that's something we can vote on later, but I think what you're looking at, that 3D, is, is illustrative. It's, it's not the, you know, the actual measurements. We've got, the, we've got the measurements here on, on this paper that we're quite satisfied uh, that uh, uh, the bin lorry can enter the site to pick up the rubbish. Right, uh, two more questions I'm going to take on this one because uh, it seems like we're having a good debate, but we've got a little way to go yet. Uh, Councillor Leband. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm going to keep on this subject very briefly to answer it because I, I could I go on mastermind for this. I'm, I'm an expert. <laughs> um, having lived in the centre of Haywards Heath, being plagued by bin lorries at four, five, six in the morning, it's one of the reasons I actually ended up joining the council. Not directly because of that, but going around confronting contractors, um, builders, etc. in my pyjamas um, to the look of astonishment. Um, precisely. And they said, what are you doing here? And I said, well, you've woken me up, which is why I'm here. See how I'm dressed. Drove the point home. Anyway, cut a long story short. The reality is, um, the, the two stories. Um, the bins that are collected from the existing residences are domestic bins. They won't be the same lorry that collects from this site. It's a Euro bin. Um, it's about that big. About the same. So, yes, Councillor Marsh is quite right. It won't be able to be pushed up the hill. The reality is that it will be collected from the bin store. And despite the fact that the um, drawings show that the, there is technically adequate space to turn the lorry around, come in in front, front, reverse, turn around, 10-point turn. Um, the, the bin drive, the bin contractors already choose to reverse in, and that's how it will be afterwards. Um, in regarding to the utilities, I wanted to make the point there is concerns here. The contractors, in terms of gas, water, power, have a statutory right dig up a road, it's not, nothing to do with the land, landowners at all. They can dig it up because they can. Um, it's not a planning issue at all. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coop. <coughs> it's not just one bin lorry, you realise, it's a medical bin lorry as well. So, um, but uh, did you say that the applicant has to make the access wider? Did I hear that? 
the access will be widened. Yes. It will be widened. Yes, enough for a bin lorry. And as, as I understand it, correct me if I'm <laughs> wrong, the normal mid sussex size bin lorry that goes around collecting our waste, the Biffle ones, if I'm right, are a similar size. It's just they've got a, dip, a different <laughs> collection of gear to pick up big bins, but it's the same size lorry. And we're satisfied that a lorry and a car can pass in that access route. Unless you have a special licence, no lorry can be more than eight foot three inches in old money wide. That's the maximum it can be for the highway. That's not the point. The point is that if the access is as it is and it's not sufficient at the moment, and I live on a private road with specific access, I can drive sheep, but I can't drive pigs. So what I'm saying is this this is a whole muddle and it needs to be sorted out because we could give planning permission to this and then uh, the people who, the applicant and the other people are going to end up with um, a headache. And so we, we need to sort it out. As to, and I think, I think it should be deferred. Well, as it is in the report, the highways are quite happy with the visibility displays and the access to the site. So we can't argue on, on that. What has been demonstrated is that a bin lorry and a car can pass within the short distance of the entrance in, into the site. That is fact. Jim, you will remember that I was the Deputy Cabinet Member for Highways and Transport for West Sussex. So I know a bit about the, this. I, I'm surprised that they haven't even mentioned the fact that this is almost it must be within 50 metres of, the, of a bend. And the law states, or the county council states, should be 60 metres, minimum. So, you know, whatever the county said, it's done on a desktop, which is what we're more or less trying to do here. It, 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 I'm, I'm very unhappy with this, Jane. Well, OK, well, it's in the report, um, but... Uh... Councillor Forbes. Thank you. Um, it's not about dust carts. Um, <laughs> I'm quite relieved it's about that, actually. It, it's just that the fact, in the update sheet, I think it's got to be done anyway because part of the building regulations, adequate access for firefighting vehicles and equipment from the public highway must be available. So, I mean, that sort of... They've got to do that, so I presume if they do that, then they're going to have to be able to get a dust cart in. Well, if there's a fire, then it doesn't matter if there's a dust cart there at all, does it, really? OK, thank you. Oh, and um, utility services, just to give you information, they only have to give the local authority, that's West Sussex, two hours' notice, then they can do what they like. OK, thank you very much. We'll move on to the next one, uh, which is air quality. Now, uh, the air quality uh, team have um, seen the report. Uh, I know we're quite near Stone Pound Crossroads, uh, but they're quite happy that's been mitigated against because the EV charging points uh, that they have, I think it's 4 or 20%, and the remainder is, is passive, so there'll be EV charging points of the future. So uh, I think the air quality issues have been mitigated against. Uh, do we need, anyone need to discuss that on air quality? Council, Councillor Eves. Oh, John, yeah. It is an, AQ, uh, an AQMA and that runs counter to DP29 and SA38 and air quality is important to everybody. So, yeah, I, no amount of EVCPs will mitigate that for me. OK, thank you. Councillor Bates. Uh, yes, when I left the uh, site on Monday, I took the opportunity to avoid Stone Pound and I found a lovely route into Hassex on the South Bank. So that's an access that people could take without all this air quality issue. But um, otherwise, they're being cars. No? OK, thank you. Right, we go on to uh, drainage. Um, members, do we have any questions on, on the drainage issues? 
Councillor Jackson. And on page 37 of the documents we were given, which they talk about flood risk and drainage, uh, they state having inf infiltration and possibly off-site pumping. Uh, what, under the comment, which is on the bottom of page 37, it says the applicants have provided a surface rainwater drainage strategy that could utilise infiltration but also utilise discharge of surface water off-site. Both options for surface rainwater drainage will require further investigation works to be undertaken as part of the detailed design stage. Uh, are there any comments from our planning officer on that particular comment? Yeah, we've got, sorry, um, uh, Susan, if you'd like to take it all, would Natsi, I think, uh, because of access in the block culvert and that sort of thing, I just wondered whether you could give a, a you know, brief round-up to the salient points on, on, on what's happening with the drainage. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, so, surface water drainage on the site, um, the applicants provided a... Uh, strategy which looks at in principle how drainage could be provided uh, at present that is used through infiltration i.e. soak away and permeable paving they've also provided an alternative if infiltration is found not to be suitable which will require that water to be discharged off-site um, into the water that is the open water area that's to the north of the site both of those options will require further investigation and detailed design, uh, which I've recommended can be done under a condition. So, uh, can you just uh, explain about the third party consent that is needed? Okay, I think that's important for members to know. Yeah, of course. Um, so the discharge off-site would potentially require third party um, agreement to cross into the other land. Um, that would be a private matter to be dealt with um, post detailed design stage. Um, it's not something that the flood risk and drainage team look at um, as it's not part of the technical design elements. And of course that sits outside the planning. Yes. So we, you know, we can't get involved in that. So technically if there's no consent, they wouldn't be able to go ahead with the bill. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Eves. Thank you, Chair. Um, this drainage test, which apparently was a bit perfunctory, should perhaps be repeated in the winter and it should meet BRE 365 standards. Um, is there going to be a pumping station? And if so, is there room for one? Thank you. Yes, I think there is a pumping station within the, within the site. <clears throat> is that correct? Um, yes, so the pumping station is for foul drainage, uh, not for surface water drainage. It's located in the low spot of the site. Um, it's shown on the plans. Um, and and on, the drainage, yeah. uh, on the drainage plans, there is an area for that already allocated. Um, that is for foul, not for surface water. Um, with regards to the infiltration testing that you're referring to, to for the Brie 365, um, infiltration testing isn't a requirement at this stage of uh, planning. However, the applicant has provided um, details of an infiltration test that was undertaken on the site to support their application. Uh, that is not to BRE 365 standard. Uh, however, it was undertaken by a professional company that does infiltration testing. Um, and it follows a standard methodology. Um, and at this stage, we're happy with that method. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Bates. Um, yes, Mr Chairman. I have some um, confidence in this aspect of the work because um, the drainage, certainly the surface water, will be dealt with under building regulations, uh, in my view. And... Also, there is this deep gorge to the north, um, although you're saying it's outside the site. Is there a, an opportunity for water now and in the future to be draining that way? It seems, I don't know the ownership of it, but it seems to be a natural water course. It's so deep there when we were on, on site. 
sorry, I, I, I can't allow you to interrupt the, the committee meeting. So, I think that um, is a possible solution that will be addressed and well, with the foul water, it's got to be dealt with properly. Um, yes, so that north um, open watercourse area um, that is shown to be a watercourse under the OS, uh, so ordinary um, watercourse network data, um, it shows it as a watercourse. Um, it will require investigation, but that is the alternative to infiltration that the applicant has provided. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hatton. <clears throat> As I understand it, the um, owners of Fairy Glen say that that is not, it is not a, a public overflow area, it's theirs. I believe that's what they said. Yeah. So I'll say it for her, as she's not allowed to. Um, yes, yeah, so that piece um, of um, open water is not located within the ownership of the applicant, um, so it would require third party agreement for water to be connected to it and discharged to it. Um, as I understand it, that's a, not a planning matter, um, and therefore I haven't been unable to comment on that um, within my consultation response. Thank you very much. Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chairman. I keep on dropping out of here. <laughs> What's wrong with this thing? Anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Natalie, thank you. I'm satisfied with the foul water, and you said it's a condition for surface water. Are you, are you satisfied um, that a condition can actually um, deal with the surface water? Because what's extant permission then now is four, four, bedroom, four six bedroom houses <coughs> with a lot of green open space, I call gardens, around it, which could potentially soak away the water. There is a lot of hard standing on this and there's very, very minimal green uh, space around it. Are you satisfied that a condition or building rates can sort out the surface water? Not foul water, because I'm, I'm fully happy with what you've said. And if it's got a pumping station, great. If you can get onto the Brighton Road, I'm happy with that. It's the, are you satisfied that building regs could sort out the surface water? Because surface water and foul water to me is not, not far different. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the um, proposed <coughs> drainage condition covers both foul and surface water. Um, the applicant has provided within their drainage strategy um, calculations that have based on the proposed developments in permeable area and the infiltration rate uh, that the previous infiltration test um, has used. They're proposing to place uh, the surface water underneath the car park, so it's made of permeable paving. Um, so it works similar to a soak away. Um, so that's where they're proposing the water would be placed, and then it would soak into the ground as if it was impermeable. Yeah, come back. Come back. Um, so is, it, is that basically like a balancing pond underneath the car park? So it would just soak away. <laughs> there are no other balancing ponds on this site at all, so they can just pump it away as and when. All right, fine. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. See no more questions on, on drainage. <laughs> Uh, we briefly uh, touch on ecology. Um, yeah, because uh, this uh, um, site has extant permission, uh, the habitat has um, already been, mitigation has already been established. There will be a loss, but uh, that's already been established by the extant permission. Um, so, um, uh, Councillor Lewis, you want to ask a question on this? It seems that the Great Crested Newt situation has only been investigated in one or two of the ponds and not the third one. So perhaps we could have that investigated because that would contravene DP38. Uh, dismayed to see there's a loss. I wonder if they could at least offer bird boxes, swift boxes to mitigate. Thank you. Thank you. Well, when I visited the site, I had a job to find the ponds. I think they've um, disappeared. Um, 
Yes, it's, it's regrettable there's any loss of, of uh, um, you know, with ecology, but actually because there's extant permission of site that's already been sort of uh, established and, uh, you know, the, the benefits outweigh the loss. So um, that's the way it is. Councillor Bates. Uh, yes, uh, I did ask on site about these ponds I couldn't see any and they don't seem to have been identified but um, I think the, the bigger thing flavour of the month at the moment is biodiversity and how we're going to replace that off of this site is <coughs> well, not shown. New, new actors we know that's, that's coming in at the moment but we're having to go by what's actually existing uh, Councillor Levand Thank you, Chair. Um, I accept the argument that the um, biodiversity loss, or sorry, was it the, the ecology loss, let's get this right, um, is determined um, based on the extent <coughs> permission. Putting that to one side, um, that would, and I also accept that if they went ahead, that would actually lessen the ecological value and of that site. But if we um, permit this, um, it's clear there will be a change under a new permission. Um, and I'm actually kind of asking if the legal officer can actually clarify what the legal as um, status of that um, damage would be, please. Thank you. Zach? Sorry. Um, so is your question the difference between, I mean, the, the extent of the, of the loss? I think that's outside of my... Expertise. Oh, it... Thank you. Um, we accept that if the four times six bedroom units are built, there will, and there is permission for that, we can't deny that, there will be an, a, a, an ecological loss on the site. That is generally accepted. We're being asked to actually, as a committee, to actually accept that accepted damage as um, an offset and therefore, therefore justification to actually permit more damage from a different building or, or, or equal damage. Um, and I, 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 my question is actually what's the legal status of the new building regarding the damage in terms of ec in, in ecology terms? in terms of waiting, um, as it should be applied to a planning application, this one. Thank you. Right, thank you. Well, the, the loss of habitat, as I say, has already been established by the extent permission on those four houses that were going to be built on, on that site. Yes, it does com conflict with policy DP38, but this has to be weighed against the benefits of the proposal and the extent permission of the site, which is a material consideration. I didn't know whether... You, so, um, Mr King. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it's just to pick up on what you've said. Um, the issue about ecology and, and compliance or otherwise with DP38 <coughs> and the guidance in the MPPF is clearly one issue and an important issue um, to be weighed against all of the other um, policies and, and that you're assessing the application against. And the report has said um, that there is some conflict with policy DP38 because of um, the development that, that's proposed. But it is a fact that there is an extant planning permission and that harm um, has to be weighed in, in the balance because that other planning permission could be finished and built out. So we're not starting from a clean slate where there is um, nothing that could go on this site. The applicants do have a fallback position um, where they could build out these, these houses that would end up being of a, if you put them all together, a similar footprint to what's proposed now. So you do have to weigh this, this issue up 
with everything else and really is as, as set out in the committee report. And in terms of um, actual protected species, um, that there, there aren't protected species on the site um, and the, the survey work has, has established that. Um, but in, in any event, if something, you know, for argument's sake, if planning permission was to be granted, development starts in a year's time and whilst works are going on, something is found on the site. A planning permission doesn't override any legal protections that exist for protected species anyway. So you know, that, that is still in place under, under other legislation. But what we're, what we're satisfied with in terms of the planning application and, and the merits is that when weighing everything, everything together, all the policies, uh, looking at the, the, the development plan as a whole, the benefits of the scheme, um, that that outweighs any conflict with DP38, and that's why that section of the report is written as it is. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Whitaker. Yeah, I, I mean, presumably this would just be covered by a planning condition to be to be signed off by the ecology officer, and none of the none of the north west south east boundaries are changing. So I don't see I don't, I don't see it relevant. Thank you. Uh, Zach, did you want to? Yes, say sir, I was just um, confirming um, Councillor Laban's um, question. Uh, Steve um, King's answered answered it uh, well, but from a legal standpoint, the extant permission would be considered material a uh, material consideration to be taken into account. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's uh, some of the main areas that I think we today we needed to discuss and actually uh, have a good discussion on some of those uh, things like access, drainage, ecology, and that sort of thing. So, members, um, does anyone have any more questions on this application before we go to a decision? Councillor Laband. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, this is a question I've raised off, offline with the, one of the senior planning officers beforehand so that I know that Mr King um, hopefully has got an answer. Um, my, my concern is kind of based upon the um, change of use which is kind of very prevalent in this planning environment that we kind of see particularly in the um, towns and the larger villages and I, I have a concern and the question was that if permission is granted for this and then subsequently year, two years down the line, um, the operation of this facility is deemed to be um, economically unviable. Um, in terms of a change of use to, to from specialist care C2 to um, C3 residential, um, what would be the planning process? Um, would it be a full permission? And the reason I ask that is because this application, because it's for care, enjoys a very, very low um, infrastructure contribution of about £63,000. Um, whereas if it was for um, a block of flats of a similar magnitude, um, the, the um, infrastructure contributions would be substantially more. And my, um, so the, it's a two-pronged question. One, if, if a subsequent change of use would um, be considered, was put forward, would it be a fresh planning application? And if not, would it be um, under some existing um, legislation as, as we can't deal with the future? Um, if it would be treated as a GDPO, um, could we put a, a condition in that any change of use in the future from this permission would actually trash, um, trigger a fresh reconsideration of the um, infrastructure contributions supporting libraries, healthcare, ex and schools, etc., as it would be for a flatted development? Thank you very much. You, I hope I can clarify that, but is the question clear enough? Yeah, I will come to the case officer, but as I understand it, we're looking at this, this application that is in front of us, and I would assume I'll pass this over clarify, clarification that uh, for a change of views, you would have to ask for planning permission. Yeah, yeah thank you. Um, the very short answer is um, there isn't a permitted development right to change from 
C2 accommodation, which is what this is at a care home, to C3, which is normal dwelling houses. So if for argument's sake, if, if, if this existed now and someone then wanted to convert it to flats, it would need planning permission and it would need a full planning application for a, a change of use. And um, depending on the number of units um, and our thresholds for collecting 106 contributions, if it was over the threshold, so then it would um, require the contributions to be made. So that's the short answer. Thank you for that reassurance. <coughs> uh, Councillor Whittaker. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, this, this scheme is obviously divided into planning and technical issues. I just wanted to provide, everybody here has spoken a lot and spoken very well, and I thank them for that, their contributions. I just need reassurance, which I think this meeting, by the uh, very exhaustive discussion, has provided on drainage, storm and, storm and foul, but also retaining walls. I noticed on the portal, um, North Dean Houses and South Dean Houses um, are concerned about the, the bank stabilisation. Well, that's covered in condi Planning Condition 26, which we discussed on site. Uh, and uh, there are a number of technical issues, which I think have all been covered. But I thank everybody for speaking um, today um, on it. So I hope you've got some reassurance on the technical issues. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Marsh. Thank you, Chair. Um, when you take a look at the picture of the site, of, of the um, building, it's not unpleasant. I can't, I can't say it's the worst building I've ever seen. I can't say it's the nicest building I've ever seen. So in terms of what it's meant to be in the tin, I can go with it. My whole question is, and we turned down one in a different organisation, which I represent on, exactly the same thing. The sheer size, the sheer bulk, makes it unacceptable to be a care home on this site. And I, I, I question that because I, 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 throughout this whole debate, and it's been a good debate, so I, I, I echo what Councillor Whittaker has just said, it, and I argued about the extant position for the permissions to say for the four six bedroom houses. And Mr. King has just reiterated if you put them all together, it's about the same size. And that's the difference. They're not all together, they are spread around the whole site with gardens all around it. But when you put them all together, you come up with that. And I still say that is too big for this site. And, you know, we, we gave permission. Um, for other care homes throughout the whole district that do have um, uh, places where the members of the public can walk all the way around, or the patients. And I, and I just clarify with my colleague next to me, uh, we do have a dementia um, centre up in um, East Grinstead, in Dunnings Mill. You're part of the world, you must know this. Um, I actually gave plan permission on that many, 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 many years ago. And, and that's all on one floor. And it's open. And it's nice. And there's a lot of green space all around it. Not huge. There are trees, but it's not huge. But people can be taken outside and look, walk around. You can't do that here. I Because I didn't go to the site visit, because I take my wife to hospital. I asked what to the east was like. And that, I, was, I was told that is hedgerows and hedges and trees and everything else. And you can see where, you can see where the dotted all the trees are. It is a very enclosed area. Now, as I say, I have not been to the site, but I can listen and visualise what everybody says. There is a drop. We saw for the pictures. There is a drop. So it is an enclosed site. So therefore, the whole site will be dominated by one building, not four, six bedrooms, which I, I would have given permission for if I'd been on the committee that had done it, but I didn't and wasn't. I wouldn't give permission for this, and therefore, Chairman, I move to recommend this as be refused, purely on the grounds of the sheer size and bulk. It just dominates the whole site. So, therefore, I can't support this, Chairman. I'm sorry. OK, thank you, uh, Councillor Marsh. Uh, well, I think it's demonstrated that there is adequate outside space. But why it is seen, deemed to be necessary to have an access route for the residents to go all the way around the building. I, I can't actually see that is 100% necessary, but um, don't, don't forget there is an, a need for critical um, care in, in the district. Uh, and that is a material consideration to be taken into account. 
Um, we have no objections from the highways. I think all the other things we've covered that have been mitigated against. Um, so I, I know Mr King would like to say a few words, so um, if I'll come yeah, back. Come back, come back Very quickly, please. Very quickly. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, in this committee, which all of us were on, not so long ago, we gave plan permission off the Kingsway in Burgess Hill. And there were some concerns raised about that. <coughs> but it was demonstrated there was a circular path around the building. <coughs> And it was just demonstrated at the time it was need for the well-being of the patients. <coughs> now, a lot of those patients are going to be dementia patients, and, and I applaud it. And I don't disagree there is not a need for this site, uh, for this type of building. I just disagree, A, the sheer size of it on this. It, if it was made smaller and took up the less there and you can get all the things that we want <coughs> and you've heard, I would support it. But it's far too big on this site. And we had a similar amount, I think it's 60 bedrooms, we gave the one in Kingsway. I don't know if that was Mr King's or not, uh, if somebody in the room can remember what that one was. But we gave that plan in permission, because I could support that one. I can't support this one, Chairman, I'm sorry. OK, thank you. Mr King. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, it's just to draw a few um, things together, I think, because we're come into the, the end of the debate, the really. End, yeah. um, so just in terms of the, the, the principle, uh, that's <laughs> all, all set out in, in the committee report. But I do think it is important um, to emphasise again that the benefits of the proposal on what is a, a site that does have a, an extant planning permission. As we've said um, in the report, there is a clear need for this type of accommodation. It, it's the only type of accommodation where the government explicitly says that the need is critical um, and that's acknowledged in our own planning policy. So that will weigh you know, heavily in the planning balance, um, looking um, at, the, at the benefits of the scheme. I'm sure members are aware of of appeals that um, the District Council have lost recently for, for this type of accommodation. And in, in those appeals, inspectors have given significant weight to the benefits of this type of proposal. I'm not saying that outweighs everything else, but that, that is clearly something that the, the committee um, sh should have in mind, I think, when coming to your um, decision on the application. The site is, is well enclosed and um, we've seen that from the photographs and the presentation. But in, in terms of um, the, the comments that have been made about whether the, this building is too big for the site, too bulky, etc., obviously that's a judgment that the, that the planning committee will have to come to. Um, but in coming to that, we have to look at well, is, is there harm from, from this um, development and the size and scale of it? This is a very well enclosed site. It's a much lower level than the highway, the, the Brighton Road. And I think it would be very difficult to demonstrate any wider landscape adverse impact at all. Um, when you're up on the, on the ridge of the downs, looking down, the, the view is dominated by the garden centre and the backdrop of Hassocks. So there will, there will be no adverse impact in, in your office's opinion in terms of that wider landscape. So again, if we're looking at, is it too big for the site? That then has to equate to some harm. Um, so I think we have to, have to look at that um, carefully. I think as, as um, the chairman said, in terms of some of the technical responses, there, there is no objection from the highway authority um, or from your drainage engineer um, to, to the scheme. So again, if, if members were, were concerned about the, the access, for example, and, and were, were wanting to resist the application on that basis, you know, we have to have evidence to support that, um, those types of uh, ob objections and reasons refusal. And the Highway Authority is saying there isn't that evidence because that they have no, no objection to the, to the application. So I think that when you look at this in the round, that it is a very well enclosed site, it does have a fallback position of, a, of four large houses of a very similar footprint to, to what's proposed here. The benefits of the scheme 
um, it's your office's view that, um, that the application does comply with the, the policies that are identified in the plan and that's the, that's the reason why the application is recommended for, for approval. If members are looking um, for a refusal, then it really has to be very specific and we have to understand what, what that reason is uh, so we would have proper evidence to substantiate that because as we know, if an application is refused, um, applicants can appeal. So I think that's all I wanted to say just in terms of trying to draw it all together, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr King. Um, before I come to Council Eves, uh, you know, I think what uh, Mr King has said is uh, you've got to be very careful here that if it is someone proposes this to refusal, then you've got to have extremely good, good grounds to do so, uh, bearing in mind what has just been said. So bear that in mind. Uh, I'm coming to the last question now, Councillor Eves. Just on what Mr King has said, I feel we haven't mentioned the loss of privacy to the two nearby houses, to their balconies. I think that is important as well. And um, the traffic during the rush hour, the safety audit was only undertaken during lockdown, so they didn't get a full impression of how difficult it would be. So those are other areas. So I, I would say neighbourhood plan, unacceptable harm to the amenities of existing nearby residents, neighbourhood plan number nine. Thank you. I uh, think your comments noted they've all been mitigated. The, 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 the site sits well within, or the building sits well within the site and there's no uh, mit, uh, harmful effects to the neighbours. But um, now I'm um, Zach, can I have some legal advice here? I think Councillor Marsh, you want to propose this for refusal. Do you still want to carry on with that? And Councillor Coote second. So we carry on with this, and I've got to ask you what your reasons for refusal. Page 26. The, while the site is outside the defined settlement boundary, it's surrounded by existing development. Uh, it is bigger, it is taller, it is the sheer mass and size of the building compared to four, six bedroom houses will over dominate. And, you, and we've just heard does it have substantial harm to anybody else? Would it? Yes, you've got to think of the future residents of this building. And that's, that is something we've overlooked. So therefore, Chairman, I suggest that we should refuse this application. I don't have a problem being a C2 on this site. This is not the right size. A smaller building, like the one that got up in Dunnings Mill, which is a much smaller building, <coughs> it is a C2, that is. So, a, so it's policy compliant. It's just that this site, in its present form, is far too big, over-dominates the whole site, and the surrounding area. That's my opinion. I've got a seconder. Whether it gets carried is another thing altogether, Jim. Do you want to come back? Just allow Mr King to come back on that. Yeah, thank you. So it's the, it's the very specific point that the building itself is essentially too big and that has a harmful effect on the neighbouring properties because of its bulk and scale. So. Principal, fine, just this building, too big, in a nutshell. Yeah, OK. OK, we've had a, a seconder from uh, Councillor Coote. Um, so, we go to the vote using your keypads now, please. You're voting for that, so yes, uh, your, your refusal.
So I will ask the legal officer to read out the results, please. Could we, could we not ask why the three are abstaining, not voting, yes or no? You would do as chairman. Okay, uh, can we just let the legal officer read out the results, please? Uh, thank you, Chairman. So um, the vote was to refuse uh, the application against the officer recommendation, and that's um, five in favour, two against, and three abstention. So the vote is carried and the application is refused. Thank you. And that, that is a refusal. Uh, we're all quite happy with why it was refused. The word, the word detailed wording. Yeah. The word, the wording would be so detailed. Later on. Agree, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the uh, detail of the wording will be between the op officer and, and myself as chairman. Okay, so, Councillor Coote, sorry, can you? Okay, well, the application <coughs> is refused. Um, I'll go to. Uh, Bear with me. Item six on the agenda, questions pursuant to council procedure rule 10.2, two notices of which has been given. I have none. And I'll close this meeting at uh, 3.57 p.m. Uh, thank you very much for coming and members of the public. I hope, we, I think we've had a good debate on, on, on this and uh, yeah, thank you.